Hey everybody, it's Jeff Stone here with Stone Cold Magic Magazine.com. Also with MagicReview.com, but today we're talking about the magazine. Today is a sad, bittersweet day in the history of the world of Stone Cold Magic. In July 2007, Stone Cold Magic Magazine started. It was a dream, a vision of mine to put out uh, a newsletter magazine. Uh, free for magicians that was full of good content that I'll admit my my ulterior motives were I was trying to grow a mailing list that was my original reason for for doing it but it, the idea was to put together some very solid content and I had some specific goals about what it would cover it would cover um, the uh, sorry I was checking my microphone there uh, it would cover the um, marketing side the business side of magic um, and so I, I came up with like a column called No Stone Left Unturned, which was um, we left no stone unturned about how to get gigs, how to how to connect with your clients, how to, you know, how to market yourself and on and on and on. Uh, there were 90 articles written over the years on that very subject at StoneColdMagicMagazine.com. The next thing that was important to me was how to improve as a performer. How to, um, you know, you, sure, you can watch uh, the Michael Amar tapes, which are great, don't get me wrong, um, but don't end up parroting him, par parroting him and copying him and doing it like him. Um, you know, take the, and, and what's great about those, those DVDs real quick is that he took classic effects and brought them to a, a modern world. <clears throat> and so um, he's taking classics, the roots of our our. our art and so I came with the title roots and branches and the idea is uh, I want you to go back and look at the roots and I, every every single month I gave you a challenge and the challenge was this month do X um, and uh, the idea was to take a root in magic and branch out branch out as and meaning make it your own take the root and grow so that's roots and branches I wrote 90 column, 90 articles on that subject over the past um, eight years, um, 90 articles on that. The other thing that was important was not everybody likes the theory stuff. You know, lot, most people, they just want the free magic. So every month, a free magic trick. And man, whew, uh, 91 of those. I'm not sure why that is. There should only be 90, um, but there's 91 for some reason. I'm not sure. So you got a bonus one in there somewhere in one of the years. I, I published two, I guess, in one month. Um, now, I did not do that alone. Over the years, I've had contributions from, uh, and some of these weren't free tricks, but they're just general contributions. But um, I do have free tricks from Jay Sankey, Max Maven, Cameron Francis, David Acker, Harry Lorraine, Paul Harris, uh, just to name a few, and I'm sure there's some that I'm missing. I think that I might have had one from uh, Joe Diamond in there. Um, and then of course, most of them are from me. Oh, there's plenty of them from Brad Skarnicky Gordon. Oh my gosh. Um, yeah, Brad has his fingerprints all over that magazine. Um, and so, um, Jason Montoya and I sat down one day at a Denny's, I believe back in 2007, maybe even late 2006. And we wanted to sort of, um, where, you know, come up with some ideas for the magazine and so those were the three that I came to the table knowing I wanted to do the free magic, roots and branches, and no stone left unturned. His was the full Montoya. Now Jason is a psychology major, and um, he had a unique perspective on the psychology of of what goes on during a performance. And so he had a whole section called the full Montoya uh, that lasted about a year. I mean, he published um, fourteen. Uh, articles in there and I think there was one or two times where we had a guest writer rather than Jason but for the most part they're all from Jason Montoya there's some excellent information in there so about a year um, so around somewhere in the middle of 2008 that uh, column no longer existed it was mainly because things were changing in Jason's life and he moved away and it just wasn't he wasn't able to stay on top of it so the the newsletter shrank a little bit the magazine shrank a little bit there's a fourth column called news <clears throat> um, and that was just, I would 
anything that was exciting going on in the world uh, of magic related to Stone Cold Magic, new products, uh, sales, discounts. Over time, I stopped doing that one because I just didn't have enough exciting news. But I did publish 64 of those. Um, and uh, so uh, over the years, we, we tried different, um, we had different columns come and go. One of my favorites that was there from the beginning and that was became a fan favorite was the saga. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, the saga guys. I wrote um, 66 episodes of the saga. Uh, and I say I wrote 66. I probably wrote more like 58 of them. My son actually wrote a couple of them. And I think I had a, a guest writer here and there, but 98% of those I wrote. And they're these just ridiculous, random stories that make no sense at all um and my goal for every one of them and i made my son do this when he wrote the couple for me the goal was simply sit down write whatever comes into your brain and do not edit and do not stop and just go that's it and it was always a paragraph of some bizarre story and what started happening is these characters started developing uh, now some of them were stories i'd already written um, for my my first book, Stone Cold Magic, and they, the, um, but I still had the same rule back then. It was just write, just go with whatever comes into my brain. But what started happening over time is these characters started reoccurring. Uh, these weird characters that are just in the world of uh, the evil Hoyle Town and the land of Bicycle Village and all this weird stuff, and they just started getting bizarre and strange and stranger and stranger. Anyway, I just. I had a hardcore writer's block on on that, and I finally just, I was done. I had no more. I was tapped out, and I I just ended it maybe a year or two, maybe two or three years ago. The saga died. Um, so over the years, uh, we also had um, the Diamond Mine, uh, as in Diamond Jim uh, Davis. He's a friend of mine here in Utah. Not Diamond Jim Tyler, Diamond Jim Davis. And I believe Diamond Jim Davis had the name before Diamond Jim Tyler. So anyway, um, what his goal was, right, uh, maybe a year before Diamond Jim came on, uh, I started writing reviews on Stone Cold Magic Magazine. And so all my reviews were posted there. I do three or four a month, and I just post them in one big long post. And But I always reviewed them more just as a, I don't know, I don't want to say an armchair reviewer because that's that gives the wrong impression. But I never took the effects out and tested them out because, especially now with how many reviews I write the, uh, every day or, you know, in a year, there's just no way I have time to make all the gimmicks, go out and practice them, test them, take them in front of a reel. I just don't have that kind of time. I already spend 40 hours a week on the reviews. So I didn't have the kind of time. So I, I always just focused on the product itself, how well it was taught, and that kind of stuff, as you know, if you watch my reviews. Well, Diamond Jim came along, and he works up at uh, it's a national... A monument park here in utah called this is the place uh, it's the the place where brigham young who brought all the mormons you know to utah to settle the valley and he stood on top of this hill and he looked around and he and he said he put his cane and his stick in the ground looked around and he said this is the place and they built a park right there there's a big statue of him there anyway jim works up there as a blacksmith it's all um period you know late 1800s period and he's always in character, but he's also a performer there. And so he performs this. And so the idea was that Diamond Jim was going to take the stuff into the real world and test it out and see what kind of reactions we got. And it was fun because um, we had some debates going on. There were some sometimes where his reactions uh, of the effects and, and what he felt about the effect were totally different than what I was saying about the effect. And back then I did judge a lot more on effect than I do today. Today I don't really care about effect, but back then I did a little bit. Uh, so that was fun. There were nine episodes of that, and then it just became a time issue and, and getting the product to Jim, and he just didn't have time to do it. So that one came and went. We had this Pillars of Stone that lasted almost two years, and that was sort of a miscellaneous um column and the idea there was anytime i had uh somebody that had an, uh, an idea for an article that didn't quite fit the mold of one of the other brand uh, one of the other columns we just put them in there a lot of those were written by brad gordon um there's a few i think i wrote a few of them and i'd have to go back and check but that lasted almost two years there's a lot of them in there i think we had 19 um yeah 19 uh episodes of that so um 
over the years, uh, things vanished. You know, the Full Montoya vanished, the Diamond Mine vanished, the Saga sadly vanished. Um, the uh, the news, I just quit keeping up with that unless something major happened every now and then I'd add one in there. Pillars of Stone disappeared. Um, and the reviews, of course, you know that story. Uh, the reviews got so huge. That was such a big part of the magazine that it became its own beast. And that's what magicreview.com is. But what became the consistent, steady core of the magazine over the past few years was Roots and Branches, No Stone Left Unturned, and the Free Trick of the Month. Um, other than the Free Trick of the Month, you'll also notice, and the Saga, I guess, uh, it's all about the titles around here. I try to do plays on, you know, my name or stone or the earth or whatever, or the author of it, you know, some play on that, uh, you know, like the Diamond Mine or the Full Montoya. Anywho, so in the Roots and Branches and the No Stone Left Unturned, um, I've also had, um, I interviewed Eugene Berger in there. Um, there was, uh, I think there's some stuff. Uh, Jeff McBride had an article that he let me publish in there. And I think Larry Haas, uh, either it was one that Larry Haas already published or but somehow Larry Haas was involved in there. Uh, so a lot of great contributors and, and contributions to the magazine over the years. And the goal was to have a good, solid resource for everything that you you know, every subject that you'd be interested in about magic, tricks. Um, then there were building your business, and then there's being a better performer, and then there's psychology, and then there's, uh, you know, reviews of effects that you might want to do, and then there's just silly, weird stuff like the saga to get your creative juices flowing, so on and so forth. Well, folks, I'm sure you've already figured out where I'm going with all this, uh, but we have come to the end of an era sadly and it is sad i really do um feel sad about this uh but uh i have nothing left to say folks i just don't um and 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 i i so the the outlet or the venue that that was or is stone cold magic magazine i have reached every goal i've wanted to reach with that and uh so i'm done i uh, the final episode final issue was december of 2014 we're into march right now of 2015 um and uh i just delayed announcing this uh, but it is everything is current up to 2014 at the end of december so it lasted uh almost eight years it, it i guess if we if we made it to july this year it would have been eight years so the magazine site will still be there it's still staying up there uh, eventually i'm going to put all of this into a book um Someday, I don't know when, but someday I will put it into a book. Um, and uh, But it's all on the website right now, stonecoldmagicmagazine.com. And you can go in there and you can go year by year if you'd like, or you can go uh, by column, you know, look at all the free magic tricks or look at all the No Stone Left Unturned articles or whatever. Um, anyway, so there are probably other contributors to the magazine that I, I unfortunately am forgetting. Uh, I, I will tell you, Chet Cox, he actually contributed an interview that he did. Um, and there's probably more. And so if you were a contributor, please forgive me for, for forgetting to mention you. Um, all of you guys over the years that have been a fan of the magazine that have read it, watched it, commented on it. Um, thank you so much. The magazine was uh, just a joy to, to write and to publish and to interact with you guys on there. Some of those uh, conversations got pretty, um, uh, not heated, but, you know, there's a lot of good discussion going on. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It really was a lot of fun. And uh, I'm going to miss it. But I don't have the time anymore, and I really don't have much else to say. In fact, I found myself thinking, oh, I've got a great idea for an article for Roots and Branches. And I'd start to write it, and I'm like, wow, this, this seems familiar. And I'd go search through the site and find that I'd already written a very similar article about this very similar subject. So, it's the end of an era, guys. Now, that's the bad news. The good news is um, I've got a project I'm working on. It's another website that um, I, I don't want to say anything about it yet. Um, there's two of them actually, but, but one, but the one I'm thinking of at the moment, it, when I first came up with the idea for it, it was always meant to be 
the next thing after I ended Stone Cold Magic Magazine. Um, it is a period peri periodical. It is a periodical type of a thing. And that's all I'm going to say about it for right now. My hope, my my plan. I really would like to launch it this October, as in October 2015. But I'm not promising that. So, anyway, folks, it's been a fun ride. It's been eight years almost, and I've had a blast, and hopefully you've enjoyed it too. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, go check it out. The site's still live, it's still active, and it will be for quite a long time. I, I haven't, uh, I'm not taking it down anytime soon. Uh, so still a lot of great content on there. Go to StoneColdMagicMagazine.com and check it out. So, until then, folks, it's time to like the video, subscribe to my channel, and listen to the random iTunes song of the moment, which I have my iTunes shut down for a second here. Let me get back to it. Well, this is no fun. I totally took the wind out of my sail there. And it is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this is a good way or a bad way to end... Uh, the Random iTunes, or the um, Stone Cold Magic Magazine. That is Hate Train by Metallica uh, off the Beyond Magnetic EP. Um, so there you have it. I didn't hate the magazine. So don't be on the Hate Train because I'm killing the magazine. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the ride. Thanks for watching this video, guys. And I will see you on my next review, which will be tomorrow. No matter when you watch this video, the next review will be tomorrow because I do one every day. Until then, folks, thanks for the ride. We'll see you next time.